And think a movie was supposed to actually make you want to kill yourself. Alright, that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but come on, DC. Get your shit together. Hello once again, watchers of Good Movies. My name is Nick Paul, and this is once again coming from my apartment. Now, today we are going to be talking about the film Suicide Squad. Now, this is a very anticipated DC film after the, essentially, failures, which were... Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and so this is the film which a lot of people were very excited for it's like oh hey this is going to be the film which redeems the DC franchise does it do that? not really, it's okay the main story of this film is that Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis she decides that she wants to get a group of people together basically villains in order to combat metahuman events and enemies which normally they wouldn't be able to handle. And after the death of Superman, at the end of um, Ben and v Superman, basically the world needs a new protector and the, she has the solution for that. And it's this team of supervillains and she forces them to become this team by implanting uh, basically grenades in their heads. And if they don't cooperate, they die. Now there's a lot of people consisting of this group, but I'm only going to focus on a few of them. We have Will Smith as Deadshot. He is more or less the lead, I suppose, in this film. Uh, very good character. I enjoyed his performances. I enjoyed all the performances in this movie. I thought all the actors did a very, very good job. Will Smith brought a very cool performance to Deadshot, very believable. Uh, Margot Robbie played an excellent Harley Quinn, I thought. that She was very fun, she was very crazy at times, but she was also very kind of quirky and likable. You also have Jared Leto being the first Joker since Heath Ledger back in The Dark Knight. Again, good performance. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted from the Joker, but I thought that he did his portrayal of the Joker well, and I think that a lot of people are going to enjoy that, that essential performance of it. I also thought that the special effects in this film were very, very good. We have Diablo with his fire, looks very, very cool, and we also have the Enchantress, played by Cara Delevingne, with her witch abilities and just the overall CGI-esque look to her when she is in Enchantress form, and just the, the special effects which she has to do with her spells and everything. I thought that all looked very, very neat. I also like that they gave humanity to a lot of these villains. They just kind of focused on backstories for of just every so often to a bunch of them. And we have Will Smith. He has a daughter um, who he is just kind of leading this double life with. He is dead shot in one reality and then just tries to be a good father. Another, he gets taken down by Batman and that's how he gets arrested. We also have Harley Quinn who started out as a nurse treating the Joker, fell in love with the Joker, and basically became Harley Quinn as we know her now today and through a series of events which happened. I did like that we got to see kind of backstory for her in regards to kind of what kind of a future she would like to have with the Joker. It's not just all chaos and crime and everything, but you do get to kind of see an insight into her mind and what her kind of desires are for her future. And I find that kind of interesting. I feel like in future films that could be kind of a conflict eventually between her and the Joker if they continue this. So it's just a cool thing to see because we could have just had these villains just like as bad guys, just badass tough guys who we don't get to see any sort of humanity or, or good side to. But really, a lot of these guys, they're not evil people. They're just bad guys who have done bad things and are in prison because of those things. And they're not necessarily evil, they just made bad choices, <laughs> more or less. Now the main issue that I have with this film is that the, the story is very, very basic. It doesn't really do anything really surprising in regards to its plotline or its villain. Uh, the villain is essentially the Enchantress, just saying that right now because it's happens very, very quickly in the movie. So she essentially takes control of Cara Delevingne's character and raises her brother from the grave and uh, her and her brother are essentially the main villains of the film. They don't really do a whole lot and we don't get to see backstory on them and they just want to basically take over the world and make it a haven for metahumans essentially and nothing else really to it outside of that. And so the ending as a result was very predictable and kind of silly in regards to kind of how it wrapped up I thought. There's also kind of some plot holes in regards to uh, the Justice League movie that's coming up soon because uh, there's there's cameos in this movie. We get to see Batman and we get to see The Flash. I'll just put that out there um, just for a minute. But The Flash is in his armored suit, which you would think he would not have until the Justice League film when he's recruited by Bruce Wayne. And so 
you just see him capturing one of the, the Suicide Squad members, and that's how they ended up in the prison. And it's just like, you shouldn't have that outfit quite yet, sir. Um, so unless this takes place after those events, but I don't think it could because there's a scene in which uh, it implies that Bruce Wayne is still hunting down these people and trying to recruit them. And so it just didn't really work that well in my mind unless I'm just not connecting something. Also, when there's a giant spell being cast into the sky and darkness is descending upon the world, you would think that uh, Bruce Wayne and any sort of uh, Justice League potential member would be racing to that scene, especially with the Flash, if anyone, uh, to figure out what's going on and stop it from happening. And yet, nothing along those lines happens. It's the same issue that the solo Avengers films have, essentially, where we have this big event which is occurring and none of the other Avengers show up to help, or S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't show up to help, or anything like that. So it's a plot hole which a lot of these films have, but it's one which was I thought was a lot more noticeable in this film for some reason. I did like the first hour of it though because I felt like I had a very good setup, we got an introduction to all the main characters, and we had a very action-packed first hour. I thought it was kind of just boom, 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 and it just kind of worked very, very quickly. And then it kind of slowed way down the second half. But guys, ultimately I thought Suicide Squad is okay. I, I, I had a decently fun time with it. It's nothing that I'm probably going to rush back out into the theaters to see anytime soon. But yeah, I thought it was fine. Uh, I honestly liked Super, uh, Batman v Superman more than, than this one. But uh, guys, those are just my thoughts on Suicide Squad. Check it out if you're interested in it in the theaters. Up to you. But those are just my thoughts on the movie. Let me know your thoughts in the comment down below. I can't speak words. Did you like as much as I did? Did you hate more than I did? Let me know. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you so choose, I appreciate it immensely. And as always, many people, I'm sweating a lot. My name is Nick Pell, and once again, keep on watching.